Welcome to Edinburgh Television. I'm Brandon Montgomery. And I'm Cheyenne McGee, and this is your weekly news update. Preco College of Edinburgh University has added a new dining area to their campus, the Haystack, located in the barn of Preco's campus. Provides students with burgers, fries, and other foods and refreshments to help get them through their day between classes. Edinburgh University offers student study abroad opportunities that range from short-term experience to a semester or a year abroad. ETV's Brady Wesp and Drew Patrick had the chance to speak with Nicole Santanado about those study abroad opportunities. So Edinburgh University offers a wide range of programs and they're usually during the break. So during the winter sessions, a lot in the summer sessions, um, there's a lot of programs that are offered um, almost every year, like South Africa is very popular. Um, they're about two to three weeks in length. The students will be on campus first, taking the course, earning the course credit, and then traveling on whichever break is to follow. You can earn course credit, you can just go for fun, it all depends kind of what that student's goals are. In addition, they can always stop by at the um, library, second floor, to the International Student Services Office. And Linda Keitlinger, the Director of International Student Services, or myself, Nicole, her graduate assistant, can help answer any questions that they have. If you're interested in studying abroad, make sure you attend a Study Abroad 101 program. The next one will be offered in November 5th at 1 o'clock on the third floor of Reader Hall. For information, go to the International Student Services office located on the second floor of the Barron Forest Library. The second annual Trail of Treats fundraiser will be held on Saturday, October 24th. The fundraiser is hosted by the Student Council and 8th grade advisors of James W. Parker Middle School. The event is for children all ages, 12 and under, and $2 per child or two boxes of Jello gelatin per child. All proceeds will be benefit of the Second Harvest Food Bank of Northwestern Pennsylvania. Throughout the autumn season, Edinburgh University's Academic Success Center, located on the second floor of the Barron Forest Library in room 201, is offering a variety of educational workshops to aid students in setting goals, developing healthy study habits, and understanding emotional intelligence. The academic fall workshops begin at the end of the semester and will continue until the beginning of November. Upcoming workshops include Getting to Know Yourself, Understanding Emotional Intelligence, Wednesday, October 21st, Goal Setting, Wednesday, October 28th, and Freshman Re Resume Building Workshop, Wednesday, October, excuse me, Wednesday, November 4th. The educational workshops are designed to aid students in their academic endeavors and to improve student learning experience through at Edinburgh University. For more information, about the Academic Success Center in the fall workshops, visit www.edinburgh.edu and search Academic Success Center. It's Archaeology Month every October. The Department of History, Anthro Anthropology, and World Languages has set up numerous events for students and faculty to attend throughout this month. For those who are interested, on October 14th, students had the opportunity to take a prehistoric bread baking class with archaeology professor Stacy Dunn, held in Hendricks Arc Room. Um, this a class gave students a chance to experiment, experience what people in ancient times had to do when it came to uh, break, bread making. Of course, in the end, everyone got a chance to taste the results of their own bread making. If you are interested in the later events happening this Archaeology Month, be sure to go on Enbro's homepage and click on the events calendar and search for more details. Remember, you have all month long for a chance to participate in something exciting. On Saturday, Edinburgh University's Department of Music and Theater put on its first annual Scott Spectacular Marching Band Show. The event was held at the Mike S. Zorowski Sports and Recreation Center and featured 10 area high schools. The event also held a Chinese auction and a 50-50 raffle. The evening closed with a performance by Edinburgh's own Spirit of the Scots Marching Band and Pip Band. Originally set to be at Scott, Scott's Harrison Stadium, however, the event had to be moved to the Zorowski sports and recreation arena due to the weather. On Tuesday, October 13th, Edinburgh University students were given a day off from class for Reading Day. In honor of Reading Day, the university's programming board, UPB, offered free coffee to students at the Frank G. Pogue Center, or Student Center, to help them relax. UPB also gave out free coffee mugs with a UPB logo on it to students who redeemed UPB tickets that were distributed throughout campus. To learn more about upcoming UPB events, you can go to Borough Sync located in your MyEnbro or Facebook.com slash Edinburgh University Programming Board.
While the Republicans have two debates already covered, the Democrats had their first debate this past week. Sarah Gillingham gives you the coverage of that coming up in her political report. Keep watching. Good evening, Edinburgh, and welcome to your weekly political update. I'm Sarah Gillingham. While the Republican candidates already have two debates under their belts and a third on the way, Democratic presidential hopefuls finally got their turn to prove themselves on the national stage this past Tuesday night. 15.3 million viewers tuned into the event hosted by CNN and Facebook, which was moderated by CNN's Anderson Cooper, many calling Secretary Hillary Clinton the winner of the debate, with Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders coming in a close second. During the debate, candidates had the opportunity to sound off on issues ranging from gun control to immigration to Hillary Clinton's emails. While candidates such as former Rhode Island Governor Lincoln Chafee weren't so quick to dismiss the scandal, one of the biggest moments of the night came when Clinton's top opponent, Bernie Sanders, came to her defense regarding the email scandal in an attempt to bring the attention back to, quote, the real issues. And let me say something about the media as well. I go around the country, talk to a whole lot of people. Middle class of this country is collapsing. We have 27 million people living in poverty. We have massive wealth and income inequality. Our trade policies have cost us millions of decent jobs. The American people want to know whether we're going to have a democracy or an oligarchy as a result of Citizens United. Enough of the emails. Let's talk about the real issues facing America. Clinton is expected to testify in front of the Select Committee on Benghazi regarding her emails on October 22, 2015. Despite Bernie Sanders coming to the defense of Democratic running mate Hillary Clinton, she wasn't afraid to go on the offensive in regards to Sanders' stance on guns. Clinton, is Bernie Sanders tough enough on guns? No, not at all. I think that we have to look at the fact that we lose 90 people a day from gun violence. This has gone on too long, and it's time the entire country stood up against the NRA. The majority of our country <laughs> supports background checks, and even the majority of gun owners do. Senator Sanders had this to say in response to Secretary Hillary Clinton's criticisms. As a senator from a rural state, what I can tell Secretary Clinton that all the shouting in the world is not going to do what I would hope all of us want, and that is keep guns out of the hands of people who should not have those guns and end this horrible violence that we are seeing. I believe that there is a consensus in this country, a consensus that said we need to strengthen and expand instant background checks, do away with this gun show loophole, that we have to address the issue of mental health, that we have to deal with the straw man purchasing issue, Senator. and that when we develop that consensus, Senator. we can finally, finally do something. As expected, Vice President Joe Biden sat out the first debate with many questioning if he may have missed his opportunity to enter the race for the White House, especially on the heels of Secretary Hillary Clinton's strong debate performance. CNN reported late last week that the current VP made a series of phone calls last week to various Democratic strategists asking detailed questions about how to launch a 2016 presidential presidential campaign. There is no word on the exact time to expect Biden's decision on whether he will be entering the 2016 pres presidential race, but a decision is expected by the end of the month. And speaking of debates, Dr. Ben Carson and Donald Trump threatening late last week to boycott the third Republican presidential debate should CNBC not agree to the terms set forth by the two candidates. In a letter sent to CNBC last Thursday, Carson and Trump demanded there be a two-hour time limit, including commercials, and opening and closing statements. CNBC agreed to the terms. That debate is set to take place in Boulder, Colorado on October 28, 2015. And finally tonight, we have the latest poll numbers for the top candidates in each party via RealClearPolitics.com. According to a Boston Globe Suffolk University poll released on Friday, October 16th, Secretary Hillary Clinton is currently in first place with 37 percentage points, followed very closely by Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders with 35 points. Though he still has yet to officially announce his candidacy, Vice President Joe Biden still maintains his third place standing with 11 points. Former Virginia Senator Jim Webb is now in fourth place with three points. And rounding out the list of Democratic candidates, former Governor of Maryland Martin O'Malley 
and former governor of Rhode Island Lincoln Chafee are tied with one point. Switching gears now to the Republican candidates, according to a CNN ORC poll released on Wednesday, October 14th, Donald Trump is currently leading the Republican pack with 38 percentage points, followed by Dr. Ben Carson with 22 points. Coming in third is former business, business executive Carly Fiorina with eight points. Trailing only one point behind Fiorina is Florida Senator Marco Rubio with seven points. And rounding out the list of Republican candidates is former Florida Governor Jeb Bush with six points. That's all the political news we have for you tonight, covering the right and the left, down the middle. This is Sarah Gillingham. I hope you all have a wonderful night. How's everybody doing today? My name is Caleb Richardson, and this is your Fighting Scots Weather Report. Today we have our national map. We're experiencing uh, more low pressure uh, in the, on the West Coast, but in the Tennessee, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina region, we're having that, low, that high pressure, which will hopefully uh, soon dry up all the uh, excess floods of uh, Hurricane Joaquin from over the weekend, or last weekend, actually. Um, so that's what's going on. Low pressure here, and we have high pressure. So hopefully, we'll dry up the flood. Uh, if we can pull up the five-day forecast, please, it'll be great. All right, so for Tuesday, we are experiencing the highest, which is 67 degrees with a low of 46. Uh, Wednesday, 65, partly sunny, with a low of 49. Thursday, 59 degrees with a low of 41. Uh, Friday, high of 55, low of 42. And Saturday, high of 60 and low of 48. So Sunday is going to be the high at 67. We thankfully not experiencing any more snow for this week at least because we it's, it's October. We're not, we don't want no more snow. We don't. So that is your five-day forecast and your national weather map. My name is Caleb Richardson, and this has been your Finding Scots Weather Report. Welcome to this week's Fighting Scott Sports Report. I am Tyler Trumbauer. Edinburgh Swimming opened up its 2015-16 season on Friday, hosting the IUP Crimson Hawks. The Scots, a nice-sized crowd, excuse me, came to support the Scots in McCombs Natatorium Friday night. We start on the men's side of things. The lone win of the night for the guys came in the 200-yard freestyle relay as Justin Ranzel, Josh Biabau, Alex Shugarts, and Micah Cottell combined for that victory. Cottell also posted a PSAC qualifying time in the 50-yard freestyle with Ransel doing the same in the 100-yard butterfly. To, for the men, moving over to the women's side, Anastasia Zemkiff earned three wins, the freshman from overseas. Mary Rosati won the 1,000-yard freestyle, as you see, finish here. Holly Stein won the 100-yard breaststroke as well. However, IUP won both the men's and women's Team scores overall for Friday night. The Scots return to the pool at the Westminster Relays on October 23rd. The women's volleyball team looked to continue its hot play on the eastern side of the state at the PSAC East-West crossover. The ladies went undefeated over the two days, winning all of their matches in straight sets. Maria Koncheck, who hasn't seen much action this season, led the offense against Cheney. Then the usual cast took over with Latoya Hutchinson, Sydney Trathan, and Vic Severo powering the Edinburgh attack. With the wins, the ladies are now winners of 10 straight matches for the second time this season and are 23-2 overall and 12-1 in the PSAC. Edinburgh returns home for a pair of matches in Macomb Fieldhouse. The ladies host Cal on Friday at 7 p.m. and Seton Hill on Saturday at 4 p.m. The women's soccer team split a pair of matches this past week. Borough visited Gannon on Tuesday. The Golden Knights are undefeated and are the top-ranked Division II team in the nation. Under some harsh weather conditions, Gannon won 4-0. Edinburgh bounced back on Saturday, defeating Kutztown 4-1 at home. Ashley Mutkis scored two goals and had an assist. Alex Brown and Jansen Hartman also found the back of the net to stop the two-game skid for the Scots. The women's soccer team has a pair of home matches this week. The Fighting Scots host Slippery Rock on Wednesday at 6 p.m. and East Stroudsburg at 1 p.m. to conclude its regular season home schedule. The football team made the short drive to Erie to face Gannon on Thursday night. In what was a shootout, Gannon survived 49 to 42. Edinburgh was trailing 42 to 20, entering the fourth quarter, but fought back behind the play of Jake Sisson, who had 364 passing yards and five passing touchdowns, both of which were career highs. He also had a rushing touchdown and ran in a two-point conversion as well. Also, wide receiver Alex Caratelli had a career day, catching nine passes for 210 yards and three touchdowns. 
with the loss, Burrow falls to 0-7 for the first time since 1940. The Fighting Scots host Mercyhurst this Thursday at 6 p.m. That can be seen on ETV, Edinburgh.tv, or heard on WFSC 88.9, EdinburghNow.com, or the TuneIn app. That's all for this week. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, at ETV Sports, to stay up to date on all the latest Burrow athletic happenings. Sweeney Ty will be coming to General McLean High School this fall for the school's annual Fall High School Musical. The show will be available for the public from November 19th through the 22nd. Tickets go on sale November 2nd with a cost of $7 for students, $10 for general admission, and $15 for limited amount of reserved seats. The high school has given sold out performances including last year's fall musicals, The Phantom of the Opera. General McLean has selected, was selected as the Grammy Signature School semifinalist in 2014. For more information on the musical in General McLean High School, you can visit generalmclean.org. That's all the news we have for this week. Stay tuned or stay connected to the, cam or the campus and community. Visit enbronow.com and have a great night.